What's going on, everybody? C4 here. Welcome back to the channel. You knew as soon as the trade happened, we were going to do this. Carson Wentz is now the starting quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts, so why not, through the power of Madden 21, do a rebuild and just see just how the next five years are going to look for the Indianapolis Colts with their brand new signal collar. So, just to make the trade simple, I'm not worrying about the trade meter and stuff. I traded Wentz to the Colts offline before I hopped in the franchise. We will have to send still the picks over. So that was a third round pick this year and a second round pick conditional. But let's say this read, but we'll just say it's a second round pick next year. We'll send that to the Philadelphia Eagles. I will just show you right now behind the scenes. Obviously, once is on the team, I just simmed through the 2020 year because we want to start in the offseason. But just, just to kind of know what happened, this were the sim stats. I just straight up plug and played. He had 40 touchdowns. And, you know, that just pains me to say as an Eagle fan. I even think that that is even possible, remotely potential possibility of Frank Reich and Carson Wentz being reunited again. So even though it doesn't officially count for this rebuild, I felt like it was worth seeing that behind the scenes. So let's continue this offseason. I'm just using a generated draft class because, you know, why not? And let's see what happens with Carson Wentz. Can he bring the Indianapolis Colts to another Super Bowl? Or is this going to end up being a bad trade for the Colts? And they're getting the same broken Carson Wentz that we had here in Philadelphia. So let's start this offseason with the Colts. We have all their free agents. I don't think they've re-signed any of these guys yet. So um, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. For the sake of Madden, we clearly have dev traits being gained that aren't necessarily there in real life. I mean, they have good salary cap, even with taking on the big money for Carson Wentz. It's not like they're going to have to let all these guys walk. If they really want to bring someone back, they could. Looking at this, I mean, Malik Hooker going up to a superstar. I think in real life, obviously, with the injuries and the success they've had with Kerry Wills and, and Blackman, kind of makes sense to let Hooker walk. But for the sake of this rebuild, man, I mean, that looks like we can make that work. Wills is an exceptional tackler. We could even, like, get a little bit cute and move him the linebacker really want to. We don't need Marlon Max. We have Jonathan Taylor. Probably the end of an era here with T.Y. Hilton. You know, maybe Mo Alley Cox, 76 star. That's not bad. Um, Pascal at wide receiver as well, 20. Hmm. I'll offer these guys this offer. Whatever the base offer is, if they take it, fine. If not, I mean, I've scouted fairly well. I think that we can... All right, well, there we go. We got our slot and we have our new starting tight end next season as well as Malik Hooker is back to try and return the investment of that first-round selection a couple years ago when he was coming out of Ohio State. So we look at this team as we enter free agency. Here's the shakeout that I did on the back end of this roster. So we have a massive hole at tackle right now. Anthony Costanzo announces retirement. We could kick Braden Smith the left tackle, but either way, we still need either a right tackle, left tackle, whatever we decide to do there. The rest of the offense, not... Not much work needs to be done. You could argue maybe a third wide receiver here to come in and compete for the dev trait, but we still got Paris Campbell. Naheem Hines really could act as a slot wide receiver for us as well. So offensively, outside of a tackle spot, it's fine. Now on the defense, we flip Malik Cooker to strong safety. We'll have uh, Julian Blackman at free. Okariki kicks in from right outside linebacker to middle linebacker. Only loses one overall point. He was an 81. Now he's down to the 80. Willis is a 78 outside linebacker. I mean, that's not even that unrealistic. Like, you watch Willis play. He's an exceptional tackler for a safety. I think he could make that transition to linebacker if need be. Obviously, this is a little bit of a rebuild specific. Like, if Malik Cooker were still on a star dev, we most likely wouldn't have done this. We would have let him go to free agency, have Blackman and Willis as our safety tandem, and then have to look at improving the linebacker spot in the draft. But we will take it as it falls here, and that is a good get for our defense. So we want to work on edge rusher. Ben Banigou and Kamoko Ture, limited ceilings for sure. You could also argue corner, get a corner three, uh, could be helpful for this defense. How is Darius Leonard not a superstar? That is a little bit disrespectful, but really, really good team. You could definitely see, you know, the Colts were truly a quarterback of way from competing in this 2021 season. We have Wentz. We know that he can get 40 touchdowns. So the sky's the limit for this Colts team. Let's take a look at free agency, though. We have like 40 million bucks. Maybe we can make a, you know, a splash or two. Not about maybe Hassan Riddick kicking him into defensive end, but, you know, he's a 3-4. He's probably, you know, 
I want to get them in a new scheme. So we are spending money. The top two free agents. I'm gonna. We're gonna try our best. We have Trent Williams here as kind of a, a rental, two-year, one-year rental. I don't know until he retires. But one of the best tackles, and I don't know why the 49ers wouldn't try to resign him. But he was there. We have no one, and it's impossible to draft linemen in the Madden Generated draft classes. So it'd be nice if we can get in there. We're currently first place, as well as Desmond King. It's just the only spot I didn't actually get my scouting to yet in the secondary. So it'd be nice to get a guy here. He's 87 slot, but he's pretty much his own corner as well, which is a scheme fit for our team. And we have the leading bid over the Jets. So let's start this rebuild off perfectly and land both these targets. And if we don't land them, I'll be mad. I'll be a little bit sad, a little bit mad. I'm an Eagles fan right now. We don't have a quarterback. I'm on edge. Or because... We are a win now, team. We get both. Trent Williams and Dez King, welcome to Indianapolis. I have an option here to pick up the fifth-year option for Quentin Nelson. And he's uh, probably one of the greatest linemen I've ever seen since I've been watching football. So we're going to do that. So for our draft board, I have three very clear targets that I want to try to land in this draft. We need a wide receiver. I like want to get some more depth there. We have three first-rounders here. Briggs from USC looks fine. The combine looks good. McElroy, I think, is the guy we want. Mid-first round talent. The 20-yard 3.90 20-yard shuttle is pretty goddamn scary. In fact, he also got 4.36 speed. You want to replace T.Y. Hilton. You want to get someone like that. Jackson just on the outside looking in uh, for our top target. Outside of that, we want an edge rusher. Miles Meredith, a fourth rounder with a first round grade. So we should be able to get him... You know, in the third round, also a very good-looking linebacker here, Chauncey Lowry, mid-first-round talent, dominated the combine, early third round, so I'm going to maybe try, you know, because we don't have that third rounder, we're going to have to try to make some trades to secure all three of those premier targets, but we will start with McElroy at wide receiver as our first pick, and he looks fairly solid, no dev trade, because of course, can't have nice things. But 74 overall, normal dev. Number 19 in true value, getting him at 24. 94 speed. I think 77 could be a little bit better. 96 agility, 96 change of direction. This guy is pretty goddamn freaky. He's twitched up. Couldn't trade out for the middle linebacker, but our edge rusher is still here. Miles Meredith on the defensive line. Should be low 70. 73 normal, 27 in true value, getting him at 56. 83 speed, 83 acceleration, 84 strength. The tackle is fine. 78 power move. The agility is pretty good. 85 for the position. Take it. The rest of the draft went fairly well. We got a, still a middle linebacker that looks solid. Wasn't the one that we identified, but Pippins here. 70 normal, 88 speed, 88 acceleration, hit power pursuit, and tackle. All look pretty good. His coverage is not so hot, but he's a nice, you know, see ball, get ball type linebacker. A 68 normal dev corner, 68 normal dev wide receiver to close out the draft. It's a good haul, man. No dev traits or anything crazy like that, but it's Madden 21. They've just, you know, tried to find a way to ruin having fun in the draft between the lack of dev traits and now apparently like half the names are censored. But I'll take this haul. I'll take this haul as we gear up for year one of Carson Wentz with the Indianapolis Colts. Very, very quick look at our squad because we did kind of just show the roster before the range. We got Trent Williams now left that left hand side. Trent Williams, Quentin Nelson. You know, Wentz is not going to get sniffed. There's going to be zero pressures allowed. Uh, no real big... Actually, you know what we should do? We'll make Pittman push him up. I'll put, I'll put McElroy ahead of Paris Campbell. Really similar style wide receiver instead of Burners. But McElroy is like three years younger, so we should have a lower XP hit. Even though I do think I might experiment the Heme Hines as our slot wide receiver. Wednesday quarterbacks up to a 74. Obviously, that regression from his garbage year with the Philadelphia Eagles is... You know, you're having a low starting point here, Colts fans. But still, 40 touchdowns. Things should be uh, optimistic that he's going to quickly, sooner or later, get it back up in the 80s and have a chance to go up a dev trade scenario. Defensively, yeah, so we made the change of Willis from safety to linebacker. Other than that, no real changes. Meredith, our second round pick, will be getting the start at defensive end, kind of like the wide receiver. Let's just go with the younger guy and see what he can do versus the guys that have been just average before. Um, uh, Desmond King, now throwing him in there at corner with Kenny Moore and Rocky Sin. This is just from top to bottom. A very, very, very good team. Um, I wonder what Naheem Hines' rating is as a slot wide receiver. I want to go check that out. We'll have Okariki there as our cover linebacker. Everything else looks good, but I just I wanna I wanna inquire. I have a feeling that like Naheem Hines might be our highest rated slot wide receiver. 78 for Pascal. Hines only a 70. 
All right, we'll just, we'll just, yeah, we'll keep him as a receiving back. Zach Pascal as our slot wide receiver. As let's see if Carson Wentz can repeat 40 plus touchdowns here in year one. Midway point of year one, four and three. Not too, too bad. First place in the AFC South. And we got some contracts that we need to talk about here. First up, it's the maniac, Darius Leonard. Massive fan of my channel. I'll pay him a trillion dollars if he wants to stay. Same with Braden Smith on the other side of the offensive line. Four year deal. Got him locked up. Uh, I do think that if you are the Colts in real life, you absolutely want to keep Naheem Hines on this team. For the sake of a Madden rebuild, you don't really need two running backs, or you can at least afford to go with a budget option, especially with Jonathan, Jonathan Taylor being like our clear and cut and obvious RB1. It, it, you know, it just doesn't make sense to give Naheem Hines $27 bucks. So we'll kick that cash to Darius Leonard. And uh, thank you for your service, Naeem Hines. Hopefully we can win a ring this year and you can cash out in free agency. So as year one ends, we can have a stable victory. Week 17, 41-31 over the Buffalo Bills. But we joked. 7-9, no playoffs. You don't make a move for Carson Wentz and expect year one of the Wentz area to end up as a 7-9 season. But that's exactly what we got here with the Indianapolis Colts. Wentz, you know, statistically played very well. Uh, turnover still an issue, though. 4,200 yards, 35 touchdowns, but 17 picks. That's about five to six interceptions higher than you really would want to see. Running the ball, did not have much of a run game here at all. Three fumbles, Jonathan Taylor, too, is not encouraging. Wide receiver, Zach Pascal outstanding. I mean, he's a sim god in Madden anyways. 92 catches, almost 1,400 yards, 13 touchdowns. 1,000 yards for Jack Doyle, 8-6 and six for Pittman. I mean, maybe we didn't need to pay the money to bring Mo Ali Cox back because we still have Jack Doyle on the roster underselling what his value was still to the squad. Wills excels at linebacker here. Kerry Willis with 116 tackles, 7 TFLs. 100 for more, 100 plus for Okariki. 10.5 sacks, Buckner, 7.5 Grover Stewart. See, not getting any production whatsoever from our edge rushers. Even though for the rookie Meredith, second round pick, 9 TFLs, 5.5 sacks. It'll give you some sense of optimism going forward. Interceptions, kind of low. No standout performers, especially given the money that we invested in Des King and free agency. Mahomes is your MVP uh, in the AFC. I don't think we're going to see too many Colts. Miles Meredith is the defensive rookie of the year. Zach Paschal, wide receiver of the year. Maybe played himself into a dev trade upgrade. And goggles, nerd alert, is the best kicker in the NFL. But you already knew that. So let's look at our wounds. Quick turnaround, get into year two of this rebuild. Well, this free agency period, I'm not even going to tempt myself by looking at who's available there because I know we have to keep our money Especially when you're dishing out like $120 million for Darius Leonard. You're going to have to keep the guys within your building. I don't want any sense of temptation. So we're just going to sit on the sidelines and hope that Chris Ballard, myself acting as, can continue to dominate the drafts and replenish our talent that way. Pick 12 in this draft. I will just have to admit, we're not drafting because we're good at safety. This guy looks like a god. Duvon Waller from Ohio State. Six feet tall, 215 pounds. 4'3 speed. Very intriguing, but for us, I mean, we're still we're still at a spot here where, I mean, this tight end looks really good. I wouldn't mind trying to take a stab at him a little bit later. We have Mathis at corner, mid-first rounder. The combine looks good. Dare we look at wide receiver again? McMullen, a third rounder with first round talent. Could be a little bit interesting, or we burn our first round pick on Ramon Pickens out of Alabama because he's pretty much a fast. He's like if you combine Jalen Waddell and only 176 pounds, like Devontae Smith into one. But we used a high pick on a wide receiver last year, and it didn't quite work out. Um, we could go with the best defensive end available, as we're still trying to chase production there, chase a baller at that point. DeAndre Ballard, 6'6", 286. He looks pretty good. The skills don't look good, but the talent looks good. But you just know, when you fall for early first-round talent, you're getting a normal dev trait. We got to do it, though. There you go. Normal dev trade. For the draft, we just killed our draft board. And then when it was all dried up, I kicked the picks for future draft picks. But after Ballard, we got our uh, tight end that didn't attend the combine, Evan Callahan, 72 normal. He looks fairly solid. Good athlete. Good catching, in, especially in traffic with 81. I got a 70 normal dev corner, McCain out of Oregon State. And a 70 normal dev middle linebacker, Mark McAdams out of Texas Southern. Uh, really good looking player as well. But of course, yet again, elite drafted face value, zero dev traits to show for it. Year two for the Carson Wentz rebuild here in Indy. This is where the roster looks like on offense. 
essentially the same as it was a year ago. Zach Pascal has gone from star up to a superstar dev trait, um, which is awesome because he's wide receiver of the year. That's about it. Still looking for some nice dev traits on the defensive side. Usually you have that outside linebacker cheese, not getting it in this rebuild. Uh, both defensive ends, we've spent premier picks on them, haven't hit on dev traits. Still surprised Blackman also is sticking on a normal dev, but you know, it is what it is. The talent is still there, so I expect to get in the playoffs here in year two. Midway point of the year, a lot better from a win-loss perspective. Six and two, first place game in hand over the Tennessee Titans in the AFC South. Contracts, well, Quentin Nelson, there's a prime reason why. I didn't even want to look at free agency. Gonna have to pay the man. Uh, we'll give him a five-year because I just need him to retire as a Colt. I think Bobby Okariki, another guy that's worth the investment here. Not nearly as expensive as I thought he could be in comparison to Darius Leonard's contract. But we'll make that happen. Same with Willis, outside linebacker. That's actually a little more expensive than I was anticipating. Rocky Sin at corner. That's a reasonable deal for three years. We got Goggles. Got to keep Goggles on the squad. We'll give him a five-year deal. Even just for the memes. Get that guy a face scan. By the way, come on, pay some respect to Goggles. Rest of these guys, not overly worried. Trent Williams is an interesting one. If he'll take this one-year deal, it's not, you know, we're probably not going to get anyone else better on the open market. So as long as we can re-sign Quentin Nelson, which I don't foresee that being an issue, hey, it was good staying out of free agency last year. And end of year two, sneak into the playoffs. Take that. Divisional title did not go to the Colts. Titans finished very, very strong, 12-4, and but 9-7. Get to run the gauntlet here from the Wild Garden Final right away. Who the best team is in the division as we get to take on the old Titans. Obviously, no great depth traits to talk about because our rookies have been straight garbage. So let's look at Carson Wentz. Played better. Uh, interceptions down a couple. You know, that's, that's an all right year, I guess. Still running game a little bit less than desired. Waiting for that breakout from Jonathan Taylor. Pascal's been a beast. A thousand yards for Michael Pittman. Mo Ali Cox, solid production there. Out of the tight end spot. Defensively, Okariki and Willis tackle machines. We got 12 sacks from the Maniac, Darius Leonard. 10 from DeForest Buckner. Interception, solid as well. Yearly awards. MVP went to Matt Ryan. Still no Carson Wentz there, obviously, because, you know, you got the GOAT, Cam Newton. Apparently, he batted. Quit Nelson, lineman of the year. A little bit of individual awards, but we don't care about that. It's all about the Super Bowl ring. Can we knock out the Tennessee Titans? We do. The dream is alive. We got the 13-3 and Bills in the divisional. Damn it. The Frank Wright, Carson Wentz magic could not work. Maybe they need to start thinking about trading for Nick Foles. Have fun with that, Colts fans. If things don't work out the second with Carson Wentz, the first time there's like a little bit of adversity, get ready for all the people saying, oh, should they also try to get Nick Foles? Have fun with that headache from here on out as we crash and burn in year two of this rebuild. Let's get into the offseason. All right, $9 million in the red. We'll figure it out. We were able to get under by a lot. A lot of dead weight. No real notables either. I literally, like, I don't think one guy that you know is a starter on the Colts I got rid of. I just got rid of all of our depth. A um, lot of guys. I think we had, like, four wide receivers on, like, one, like, cheap-ass $1 million contracts which helped us out a little bit. Uh, but we don't have a whole lot of money to improve the squad. Obviously, there's a big glaring hole there at right guard. No disrespect to Danny Pinner, but we might want to do a little bit better there. Same with, you know, death behind. We have one running back on our roster that we're going to have to deal with. And then you flip through the defensive side. Actually, it's it's fairly solid from that standpoint. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy with the team and able to, you know, endure a very bad starting salary spot. Just kill off our depth and we're back in the green, baby. About 26 here in our third draft. Got a bunch of first-round talents. We needed a backup running back. There is one there, even though it's not really a backup. You're paying for it in the first round. We need a starting guard. We have an early first-round center that we could kick to guard. Thinking that's our pick. And then hope in the second round that you know someone like Shaq Sherwood in corner could still be there. One of our D tackles. But we got to grab Cam Anderson here out of Alabama. He could be our starting right guard. 74 Nor the depth trait, C4. Do not look at the depth trait. Number nine in true value. Looks pretty damn good. Great pick yet again for the Indianapolis Colts. This rebuild is going to go down as like arguably the best drafting rebuild on YouTube without a dev trait. We got Anderson, 74 normal. We got Sherwood in the secondary, 74 normal. Got a third round corner, 72 normal. Got a 70 normal, 70 Normal. I actually got a, like a late round QB, which are very hard to get. 67 normal. I simmed out the draft. So 
So how fitting. One of the auto picks is hidden dev. We got a running back there with a dev trait. Don't count. I didn't pick him though. I'll be honest. I'll be the first one. With, I simmed out after this QB. And I'm, yeah, of course we get. Whatever. Still happy with the haul. So as a gear for year three team kind of remains the same. Wentz peaked a little bit. He was a 77 last year. Now he's down to a 76. So he's as good as he's ever going to get for the most part. I mean, a big year could help with an overall, but I don't know if we'll ever get Carson Wentz up into the 80s again. So the fact that again, we're, we're hurting for dev traits, Willis did go up from a star to a superstar, which helps on the defensive side of the ball. But generally speaking, you know, there's, you know this is, hey, if you ever wonder what a rebuild would look like when you hit on picks, but don't get dev traits, this could be the prime example for that. It's just hard to build a super team because your guys don't develop as quickly as they maybe should have for how good of a prospect they are. Because, I mean, most of the time we're hitting on guys that are... We're getting like two or three guys every draft that are top 30. And we just haven't got any depth tricks. But Anderson kicked out to guard. Goes up his overall a couple bits. So that's that's good that we hit on that to help protect Carson Wentz. And hopefully establish a little bit of run game as Jonathan Taylor is still in search of his first 1,000-yard rushing season. As the Colts want to try to make it back to the playoffs here in year three of the Wentz Colts rebuild. All right, we're 0-7. Um, Kenny Moore, I want to resign him. Let's give him maybe a three-year deal. He wants to stay. Um, John Taylor has been playing well, but you just can't let a prospect like that walk. Zach Paschal has been very good. Probably our best player so far in this rebuild. Julian Blackman, we want to get him back, even though I'm very surprised at this point. He still has yet to go up a dev trait. Pittman and Wido, that's actually a very reasonable deal. Five year, under $30 million. I think beyond that, uh, Grover Stewart wants to re-up for a one year. I'll take him on that, which it is. Well, these guys are happy here, even though we're 0-7. I uh, haven't got great return on investment on Desmond King. But, I mean, it's one of those things. He's probably going to be the best corner available if we don't re-sign him. So, it's you know, you do if you do. Damned if you do, damned if you don't type situation. I don't know if we have enough to... We don't have enough to extend Trent Williams, so we'll let him go chase a ring elsewhere if he decides not to retire at the end of the season. We knew year three was a wash. 0-7 at midseason. We'll kind of do that. Finish 6-10. and 10. Finish out strong. You know, 6-3 and three down the stretch is, is not too shabby. Wentz playing is still at a very high level. That's his, actually his best year with us, oddly enough. 4,200 yards, 37 touchdowns, 12 picks. Over 1,000 yards for Jonathan Taylor, so it makes that contract extension... A little bit more, there's a little bit more sense of optimism there that he's getting his, you know, he's hitting his stride right now. Pascal, Sim, God, in Madden. 1,200 yards, 14 touchdowns. Cox with a nice year. Pittman with a solid season as well. Defensively, uh, tackles out the ass. Darius Leonard's our best edge rusher, I guess, now at 215 pounds. That is another thing, too. Like, if you were ever like, whoa, C4, getting a little cheesy there, bud, moving safeties outside linebacker. Darius Leonard's two pounds heavier than Willis is. So it's not that unrealistic to think Willis can actually make that transition to linebacker on top of the fact that, yeah, he's a great tackler, would would do that. Sean Watson is the MVP. Ooh, Philadelphia, Jalen Hurts at number three. I don't know if that's a rebuild we need to do eventually, what Philly does post once, most likely. Uh, Wentz coming to number seven in the MVP race. So I think both teams are kind of happy if it played out this way. Wentz number six in Offensive Player of the Year. Then for the rest of the individual awards, I'm not expecting to see any Colts because we were 0-7. First half of the year was an absolute write-off. So let's get to the offseason here and gear up for year four of this five-year rebuild. Trying to build your team the proper way has not worked out well for us on the defensive end standpoint. So we have $14 million of salary cap. Can't afford J.J. Watt. But I do think someone like Cam Jordan could be a little interesting. As... Uh, it won't let me resign anybody. So that's that's just that's just where I'm at here. Awesome. If I could sign anybody, I'd I'd sign I'd sign Cam Jordan. But this is apparently a brand new bug that I found in Madden franchise. Hi Twitter C4 here, just playing a brand new Madden franchise Carson Wentz rebuild. Want to let you know there might be a new bug to be had in free agency. I can't offer anybody. A contract. There's no option to offer them any money. Um, also, my roster has Trent Williams here, who retired two years ago. 
He's still there. So... Madden franchise. So since the game decided to handicap me by not allowing me to sign any free agents, here's hope we get our first dev trade here. Need a DN, still looking for a DN. Wanted to get Cam Jordan, wouldn't allow me to do it. Top skills look phenomenal. Early first round talent. Can't wait for him to be 74 normal. Let's go. Oh, he's 78 normal. Yes. 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 Second round though, took that same energy. Got Morgan Boner, 77, hidden dev, number five, true value. Keep that energy going. Oh, keep it going. Keep it going, Dylan Davis, third round, tight end, 74, hidden dev. We're cashing in, baby. You know if you ever get in your Madden franchise where it's completely bugged and you can't sign anybody in free agency, hopefully your draft doesn't have everyone's name start out and you'll get good studs. That's all it took was for free agency to break for the draft to yield some great players. I send the draft out after our fourth round selection, but I'm, you know, no, it's another home run. These guys are all just roster, bottom of the barrel type guys. 78 DN, 77 hidden dev, 74 hidden dev. Finally, what has been arguably one of my strongest rebuilds in terms of drafting, we start getting some absolute studs. And look at this, man. 95 acceleration. This guy's the greatest burst in the history of running backs. For our squad here, as we gear up here for Wentz went up dev trade. I will take that. Even though he's regressing or peaked anyways from a base overall, I will absolutely have him go up to a superstar dev trade, which he got last season right there at the end of the year. Super Bowl week. Very happy with that. On the offense, so we have no Trent Williams. I got this Rodgers guy off free agency. He was a center. I kicked him out the tackle because it's mad. And he's up to a 72, but a little bit worried about that. I'm going to go Davis as our starting tight end, too, just to maximize in dev trade and the fact that he's a rookie. Even though Wally Cox has been producing, I'm kind of hoping that it's the scheme, not the player. And all those targets, all those production will just help Davis hit the ground running and explode as a player. Speaking of exploding, we got Michael Boner here, 77 hit in dev. He looks really special. Should be a nice change of pace option from Jonathan Taylor. Zach Pascal is up to a superstar X Factor, which is no surprise because he's easily been the best player in this rebuild he just craps out like he could have a bad year and he'll still get a thousand yards 10 touchdowns defensively Darius Leonard up to a superstar depth Kerry Willis up to an x factor here with the shutdown ability which is great good luck throwing on these linebackers we're gonna just eat the opposing team's running backs and tight ends alive if they try to target it Bobby Okariki also got off normal up to a star dev so the defense is peaking Wentz is now back up to a superstar here in year four Smelling like, smelling like a playoff run. Two and five. Two and five. Well, let's get Wentz back for one more year. Um, Kelly for sure. We want him back. Forrest Buckner for getting up for one more year of this rebuild. Let's let's get all these guys, let's get all these guys locked up for one more season to run it back because this year's an absolute wash. All right, year four did not yield the results we were hoping for. Seven and nine again, uh, unfortunately. Uh, do we have our dev traits though? We actually can finally peek at dev traits, see if we have any exciting rookies. Davis is a star dev. Boner is a star dev. Um. Okay. Uh, it's better than normal dev, I suppose. In this off year, Carson Wentz, yeah, there's the dip in production. 3,800 yards, 26 touchdowns. Solid year from Taylor. Zach Pascal again, just the MVP of this rebuild so far. Willis also has been very, very good moving from safety to linebacker. Buckner, 21 TFLs, 8 sacks, leading the team. Des King, 3 interceptions. Very, very quick look at the MVP awards, or just general awards. I'm not, I don't think we're going to have anything. Oh, Morgan Boner! Offensive Rookie of the Year. What you like to see. Not much on the other back end, but hey, hopefully we can sign free agents this year because if not, might be tough to win in year five. Bring that Super Bowl home for Indy. I couldn't sign anyone if I wanted to, but just to let you know yet again, there's something going on with this franchise where it doesn't even give me the option A to talk to any free agents. So 
Yeah, it'd be great if anyone in EA watched this. Go ahead and fix that, please. Thank you. Final draft of the rebuild. Got a lot of 70s across the board here. First couple picks, of course, as token for me when I'm drafting. All normal devs, the rest of the draft, though. No one in the 50s, so generally speaking, it's been very, very good from building the draft. And unfortunately, that's the only way we've been able to add to this squad because it's been bugged in free agency. Oh, hey, we got it. This is it. This is all or nothing. Year five, Carson Wentz, Indianapolis Colts rebuild. This is as good as this team is going to get. Wentz, 77, superstar. We got Taylor, 90, Pascal, 90, X-Factor. Pittman's up to an 85. Offensive line, got an absolute just hole there at... Uh... Actually, you know what? Because centers don't really matter at all in the sim. Like, you could have, like, a 40 overall center. I guarantee he'll still give up easily, like, the least amount of sacks on your line. We'll just kick Ryan Kelly out to tackle. His tackles are very important. Um, defensively, still good, right? 96, Buckner, X-Factor on that D-line. The, the edge rushers are solid, even though the dev traits are pretty crappy. Linebacking core is good. Safety tandem is good. Corners are good. Can we not start out 0-7? This is a team that absolutely, at worst, should make the playoffs. We're doing the whole thing. We're going to do it live. We're going to sim. We're going to take it as is. Get my natural reaction while we're here. Let's just talk about the trade. I obviously broke down the trade. My initial thoughts. My live thoughts. As soon as it happened. Now that we're sitting here. I don't know. Colt fans. How are you guys feeling? Like this This is a little bit more focused on the Colt fans. Not the Eagles side of things. You know. I, I think personally I would rather Carson Wentz than Phillip Rivers. I got bias around that. Because I don't like Phillip Rivers. And I like Carson Wentz. Or I liked Carson Wentz. Relationship ended. As we didn't make the playoffs. 9-7. Game behind. Not what you're looking for. One playoff run out of five years with Wentz. He, statistically, he's been solid. Right? 40 touchdowns year one. Automatic 30-plus. Been playing like a fringe top 10 quarterback. So the value, the return on investment for the draft, draft capital that you've traded Philadelphia for Carson Wentz hasn't been too, too bad. But the success, the playoffs, the Super Bowl rings that you really are are trying to chase by making a trade to acquire someone like Carson Wentz. Unfortunately, here in this Madden sim, was not there. The defense got a whole lot of interceptions, but not good enough, man. Not good enough. It's Carson Wentz. I mean, though that's those are outrageous numbers, but have 300 touchdowns to about 3-1 to one touchdown interception ratio is kind of crazy. But unfortunately, it did not work out in this rebuild sim here at Madden 21 amongst all the glitches and bugs. Carson Wentz could not bring the Colts to a Super Bowl. So I suppose we definitely could take a look at the other side of things, do an Eagles rebuild with Jalen Hurts or whomever at quarterback. But for me to do that, I'm going to have to get off my ass and add in the 200 players I need to replace for my draft classes. But from a Colts standpoint, eh, this is how it plays out in real life. I don't think you guys are going to be too, too happy. But let me know in the comment section below still how you guys feel about this trade. Thank you for watching. As always, if you're first time stopping by, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We'll be back tomorrow with a new episode of our UNLV Coaching Dynasty. And uh, thank you guys for watching. And until next time, it's C4 saying peace.